Hallelujah in this house today. Let's give God some glory. Come on, if he ain't done nothing for you, stay in your seat. But if he's done anything for you, come on and give him a hand clap of praise this morning. Praise be to God on high. We love you, we love you, we love you. Come on, somebody in this place. Give it up for Jesus. Give it up for God. Give it up for the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. Let it be known that we serve a mighty, mighty, mighty God. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. We invite you to join with us this morning. Keep that spirit of God going today. Thank you. Amen. Bless the Lord. The song is Lord, you are welcome in this place. I want you to move your mind to yeah. not just this building. Let the Lord come in in your home, that place of job, that place of the doctor's office, that place of the lawyer's office, the courtroom, that place of the medicine bottle. Lord, have your way. Come on, take your mind. Where you want the Lord to be. Ask him to heal and deliver. Lord, have your way. Somebody just say, Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Your mind to a place that you want the Lord to change and have his way. One of those places that we're not ready for the Lord to, to deal with. We want the Lord to have his way. Take a few minutes and ask the Lord to have his way. Just say, have your way, Lord.
together. He is a great guy. Come on, you'll feel better. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord better than you did last week. Give your best praise today. How great is how God sing with me how great is how God all can see how great how great is our God Come on Ebony How great Pray. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Can you say yes? Yes. 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 Yes.
praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Can you say yeah? Yeah. 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 I lift my hands. I lift my hands. To give you glory. To give you glory. I lift my hands. I lift my hands. To give you praise. To give you praise.
is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That was just the mic warming up. Because the spirit is high today. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I have a personal question I'm going to ask myself. And that is, where would I be without worship? Probably not here. Probably at home. But I thank God. Thank you, God. For my worship experience. It's my favorite thing to do. I don't do it enough. You may do it enough. You may pray and do that much more than me. But I don't know what I would do without worship. So I asked myself that sitting up there so you can, it's not a rhetorical question, it's just something to think about. Because one thing about it, our God deserves Amen. our worship. Amen. And it just doesn't have to be singing, dancing, it could be praying, talking to him, giving him a little time. Where would I be without worship? I'll be honest with you, this has been uh, a yeah. week of ups and downs and ins and outs. But Isaiah reminds us, fear not, for I am with you. Jameis, be not dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous yeah, yeah. right hand. So I'm just stopping by on this first Sunday in October to let you know, fear not. For he is God and he is with you. And he will help you and strengthen you with his almighty righteous right hand. Amen. I am delighted to be in front of you today. I can't believe this is the fourth quarter of the year of our Lord. What happened to April, May, June, July, all the months, January, February, I can name them all. But we are here in the mighty month of October. When I was working at the bank, I would... Uh, hurry up in October because I knew November and December would be here and I had goals to reach. So I would just be working so ar arduously trying to get things done before the end of the quarter because it's the fourth quarter. But some mighty things happen in the fourth quarter. I think some mighty things happen with the Falcons in the fourth quarter this week too. Fear not for I am with you. I greet you on behalf of our amazing pastor, Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith and his loving leading lady, all of you. From the pulpit, it's just a little different when you welcome someone. But I want you to know the, the spirit is already in this place. I'm just being a mouthpiece to go through these things you often expect, and that is a welcome. Just a friendly reminder that this is worship. And we and I never take it lightly when I come before the throne of mercy to do anything. So I just ask right now, Lord, whatever it is in me that's not like you, remove it. And have your way as your mistress of, of this worship experience today. Amen. Amen. We have to get fed by our responsive reading. So if you would, just stand up, and we are going to be going back and forth just for a few verses here out of Ephesians 6, 14 through 22. Now, I have my Bible on my phone. You may have yours in your hand, but guess what? The media ministry has put it up on three screens. Amen? So what we're going to do is I'm going to read first, 
and then you're going to follow me. And when we get to 22, we will read mightily together. Amen? Amen. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Yes. Amen. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the in enmity thereby. Yes. Then we continue to 18. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. And are built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Mm. Now this is 22. We're going to read it mightily together. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. You may be seated. May the Lord add a very special blessing to you, those who heard it on our airways. There is good news. I want to, before we go into the announcements, I just want to share with you that this is October, the month of breast cancer awareness. So I did a little Googling, right? This is not in just the United States. This is an international awareness awakening of breast cancer all over the world. And this through charities and through wearing pink and shades of pink to recognize breast cancer awareness. So what I want to do, since I am at the pulpit, is just those of you who are or know or have been a survivor, will you please Rest to your feet so we can acknowledge you on this first October Sunday. Those breast cancer survivors, thrivers, women, hallelujah, hallelujah, all over this place. Hallelujah, all over this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. And you know what? Something about the women that stood up and the men that stood up, you know what? It was bold. They, you know how when you say, stand the rest of your, yeah, right, get up. They stood up like soldiers. Yes. Yesterday, I went to get some food for the soul. There was a lady talking. And my mom and I were interacting with her, and she said, I'm not only uh, one time have I been a survivor. I'm a two-time survivor. So I know God has something special for me. Did you all know that, you know, you could be a one or a two or a three? So I just stopped by here to tell you, we thank God for you being on the field, in the battle, in the spiritual warfare. And those who you talk to and lift up, where you got 30, how many days in October? 31? You got 31 days if this month to recognize breast cancer awareness. So take advantage of it. Put it on your Instagram. Text a friend. Hug a survivor. Wear pink. It's going to be hard for me, but I will. I'll wear pink in October. Amen? And I have 31 days to do it. Right, Pastor? So without further ado, God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And at this time, the courtesy guild, they're going to come in their own way to give us the announcements. Amen? To God be the glory. Good morning, Antioch East Baptist Church family. Good morning. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I couldn't.
wait to get into the house of the Lord to fellowship with my Antioch East Baptist Church family this morning. Now, wait a minute. I think I see some new faces with us today. If you are new here to Antioch, would you please take a moment to stand? Don't be shy. I would love to welcome you not only to our church, but to our family, where we believe in growing together as a family, rooted in community and centered around God. Under the great leadership of our senior pastor, Dr. Michael A. Smith, and his stunning rib, First Lady Patricia Smith, we are committed to creating a space where everyone belongs. We hope that during your visit here today, you not only feel at home, but you also find your place in this family. We look forward to walking alongside you on your journey of faith and growth, and we are always here if you need us. We look forward to welcoming you as a part of our family. And you're in luck. We have a special treat for you today. Dr. Marsha, are you ready? The Jesus, the Jesus in me, the Jesus in you, the Jesus in me, the Jesus in you. It's so easy. Come on, y'all. It's so easy. from the Reverend Dr. Susie Howard's family, Pastor and Lady Patricia Smith, Administrative Assistant Teresa Wells, our entire Antioch East family, please accept this expression of love and knowing how grateful we are for the showering of love you rendered during and after the transition of our mother, Dr. Reverend Susie Brown Howard, during her homegoing celebration, internment, and repast services. We cherish you all, Sister Pam Jackson, Brother Jimmy and Sister Kim and the Howard family. Amen. We have our praise in pink that will take place October the 20th, 2024 at our 1045 a.m. service. Wear your favorite breast cancer t-shirt, men, women, boys, and girls. And you may also purchase a candle for $5 in honor of a survivor or a loved one. The 152nd Church Anniversary Committee is in the process of developing the order of service and is seeking any church member who has a desire to participate. If you would like to be considered in any capacity, please see Deacon Alonzo Wright. Attention all church auxiliary and ministry presidents. In preparing for our 152nd Church Anniversary, the deacon and deacon wives need your assistance. This year, we plan to have a historical exhibition museum that showcases the history of our church through our various ministries and auxiliaries. The history of, our, your, of your auxiliary or ministry will be on display. And to make sure your auxiliary is included in this milestone event, we need your assistance with the following. So we, you can provide pictures of your auxiliary from 1863 to the present. And if you provide pictures, please list the name of each person in the picture. Artifacts of your auxiliary from 1863 to present um, and a brief description of your auxiliary and when it was established at Antioch East Baptist Church. The deadline to have this information turned in is Sunday, October the 20th, 2024, and all documents can be turned into Dr. Denise Mapp or Deaconess Pam Bradley. Thank you in advance for your consideration, and Deacon and Deacon Wise of Antioch East Baptist Church. As you all know, our Deacon Jesse Carson, Je Jesse Carson is still missing, and we are asking for prayers and support, helping to find our beloved Deacon Jesse Carson. If you know or hear anything, please contact the family at 404-401-1050 or the authorities. Members, 
If you are not receiving your emails or calling posts, please contact Sister Teresa Wells or email her at teresawells at antiochinc.org. Our, the first time at Antioch Historical Gallery, we need any items that you may have that's related to our Antioch history, and the artifacts will be put on display to inform our new members about our history and remind our mature members of our beginning. The committee will be collecting items starting next month, and dates will be announced later. Please support this effort as we are looking forward to making it a part for our church anniversary in November. It's 152 years. All right, it's time to vote. And the early voting period for Georgia general election starts October 15th, 2024, and will end on November 1st, 2024. Polls are open on election day from 7 a.m., and they will close at 7 p.m. Vote, vote, vote. All right, kids, our Antioch East CYF presents our Trunk or Treat. It's part of our fall festival. <laughs> this and to make it more interesting, the best trunk design gets a prize. The CYF would like to have at least 15 trunks for the children to visit and collect candy. We are asking for ministries or individuals to decorate and host a trunk. Our volunteers will, be, volunteers will need to decorate their vehicle's trunk and provide candy for church members and community to be able to have a safe and fun environment to get candy. For more information or to sign up, please see Sister Danielle Parker Umrani or Sister Brittany Parker. We also have the CYF presenting our annual Carnival Fall Festival. We'll have food, games, trunk or treat, prayer, prizes, and more. That will take place this Saturday. Say it with me, this Saturday. This Saturday. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to come out between the times of 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. Again, this is free food, candy, and fun for kids. Our Joe for Hands ministry meeting will take place this Sunday um, in the conference room next to the admin office immediately after worship service. If you would like to join the ministry, please feel free to attend the meeting. The Joyful Hands ministry meets every second Sunday of the month, and also they will be sitting in on the third Sunday, October 20th, in celebration of their anniversary. God bless. Our Women's Day and Women's Ministry meeting will take place Sunday, October the 20th. There will be a Women's Day and Women's Ministry meeting immediately following worship service in the Women's Sunday School class. And meetings for Women's Day will be held every third Sunday of each month. That concludes our announcements for this Sunday. And you all have a blessed week. Thank you. Thank you, Courtesy Gill, for those very informative announcements before our very own pastor Reverend Dr. Michael A. Smith comes to cover us we are asking that the senior ministry come as they have a very special presentation at this time Give the senior ministry a hand clap of praise. Amen. In furthering our efforts to show our love and our appreciation to our very own brother John Cherry, we have this beautiful plaque that we want to present to you, brother Cherry. So we ask that you come on up. Let's give them a hand clap. is presented to Brother John A. Cherry, Reverend Sharon Hardin, who 
coordinator, Dr. Michael A. Smith, senior pastor, September 22nd, 2024. Theme, look where he's brought us from. Amen. Also, we have um, to give thanks to Dr. Joanna Stellis Amen. because she picked out this beautiful plaque for Brother Cherry. Amen. So, school and my degree was in linguist and yet right now I don't know what to say <laughs> <laughs> this has been one of the most outstanding things that I've had to come up had happened to me in my 80 years of living <laughs> all I can think of to say Thank you. And I love every one of you individually and as the Antioch East Baptist Church family. Be blessed. Amen. Brother Cherry, well deserved. Amen. We we thank God for our senior ministry and all that they do. I wasn't sure if Sister Trotsky was going to come up and take half of the plaque, but we thank God for the blessing. Good morning, church. This is a great day. It's a new month. God doing new things. God is seeing our faithfulness. He is testing us in more ways than one. But it's prayer time. It is prayer time. We have been praying for Deacon Carson that we ask God, God, please, please, Lord, whatever the circumstances, Whatever the outcome, bring them home. We, we pray to God. We know what our request is, but we say, Lord, please bring them home to his family, to his Antioch East family. I know it's prayer time. I look around. I see Sister Dorothy McClendon. After all the time that has passed, that she lost her mother. She was attending her mother. She has made it back home to her sister Dorothy. Doris McClendon, we love you. Amen. We thank God for you. And all the others, I'm looking around in the room and seeing, I just thank you, Jesus. But this morning, I'm going to ask that we do something a little different. And I know, and I'm aware, trust me, I am married to a germaphobe. Trust me, I know about cleaning, and I make sure I do everything I'm supposed to do to make sure I stay healthy. But this morning, I want to say this is that I said that because I want to see you all this morning. And I need for you to come down to the altar. I, I, I want to come down after. I know it's the month of birthdays and anniversary. I haven't forgotten that. But I want you all closer to the altar this morning. Those that feel comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you stay where you are. But I, we need prayer. We need, we need prayer. We gain strength one from another. And those who want to stay at your seat, you stay at your seat. But I just ask that we come down, because this week was a trying moment. Our pastor married as Jim Edward Howard was called home. And we say, let's pray over the Howard family. We pray over the Antioch East family. But Deacon James Terrell and his family is a part of the Howard's family. We, we're lifting them up. Pastor Howard served for 34 and a half years. 
as a senior pastor. And he's been here with me during this time. And I thank God for that man of God. But I want to pray over you all because if you celebrate a birthday this month, raise your hand. If you're celebrating a birthday in the month of October, raise your hand. October. If you're celebrating an anniversary this month, raise your hand. And if you just need what they call some prayer, raise your hand. Let us go into prayer. Father God, master of all masters, our leaning post, our battle lack in the time of battle, our shelter in the time of a storm, our will in the middle of a will, our all in all, we call on your name right now, Jesus. Lord, your children, your children, God, they are in need right now. Some are saying, thank you, Lord, I've got another year I can celebrate my birthday. Because we understand everybody won't get a chance this year. But Lord, just show them favor right now. Then there are those that say we're still married and we're still holding on to your unchanging hand. God bless those marriages. But then it's us, God, that's not celebrating the birthday in the month of October. We're not celebrating the anniversary in the month of October. But we are celebrating the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because, God, you've been mighty good to us. Lord, even though our hearts may be heavy, but you are a heavy load bearer, God. We want to thank you right now. God, somebody right now say, I'm just holding on by a wing and a prayer. But God, we know prayers will see us through. God, we may feel like we're standing on sinking sand, but on your rock is a solid foundation. Some of us may feel right now discouraged, but God, you are an encourager. Some of us right now feel like we're blindsided, but God, I tell you, you are the light which give us all light out of darkness. There's some of us right now saying, I just don't feel like it, but God, we thank you for giving us the feel-good spirit, the feel-good spirit to lift our hands and give you praise, the feel good spirit to say hallelujah, the feel good spirit to be able to say I know everything is going to be alright, the feel good spirit, God you done done it before, you will do it again the feel good spirit we're never alone God you walk with us you talk with us, you tell us we're your own our God is breast cancer away but God, you hold all diagnosis. God, you are the healer. You are the sustainer. You are the midnight rider. You are the one that say everything is going to be all right. We call on you right now, God. Lord, some of us right now, we said we almost set our doors. But God, you are a shelter when we don't have anywhere to go. We thank you right now. Oh, the devil want to steal our joy. The devil want us to be down and out. But God, this joy that we have, the world didn't give it to us. And the world can't take it away. God, we need you right now. 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 It ain't nobody but you, Lord. When we were in trouble, you brought us over. We want to say thank you right now. We just can't keep it to ourselves. The God we serve is a living God. The God we serve is a way out of no way. The God we serve know all about us. The God we serve, we thank God. Thank God. Thank God. God, even with Pastor Howard, I'm not sad the man knew God. The man served God. The man loved God. The man showed God. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. When nothing is left in us, God, 
When I is the last time a breath has been taken from this body and the bodies that stand before me, Lord, we just want to say, do what you do and have a room for each and every one of us. In your name, in your name, we claim the victory. Amen, amen, and amen. your hands together. He keeps on making a way.
glory, glory. As the worship experience continues, now is the time that we are going to have our offertory prayer, and we'll continue our worship through giving. Amen. After that, of which we will continue in song and then the inspirational yeah, yeah. message. Be ready. He's a coming. You don't want to miss this food from the Lord that pastor is going to feed today. So you can go ahead and text your friends and uh, reach out to them. It's easy. Just send them the link and they can click on it and come and join virtually if they're liking or if you know that somebody's got to leave early, tell them to come on in because guess what? It's a, the message will be here shortly. Before I take my seat, can I just remind you of the miracles, signs, and wonders yeah, yeah. that are for believers to remind them that everything is going to be all right. So I just want to share that with you as you go throughout your week. And we thank God in advance for the message and the messenger. We pray your strength in the Lord. To God be the glory. Amen. It's another day that the Lord has blessed me. Another day that the Lord has blessed me. He has blessed me. Lord, sin and evil kept my mind yeah. stayed on sweet Jesus. Yeah. It's just another day that the Lord has kept me. Church is just another day that the Lord has kept me. Another day. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. Father God, Father God, we come before you this morning, God, with bowed heads and humble hearts. But Lord, there's a gap in this old building. Lord, you know our hearts are heavy, but we respect your wishes, Lord. Yes. You made us, we didn't make ourselves. And anything that you took from this earth belongs to you. But Lord, we said thank you for the presence of those you called home. Thank you for our marriages, Pastor Howard served us 34 years, Lord, baptized us, married us. God, we thank you for his presence. Gone but not forgotten. Lord, you took away one of our blessed deacons. We don't know where he is, but you know. And whatever your will is, Lord, we ask you to bring him home. Now, Lord, we come to give you a portion of what you have already given us. We're not going to be ashamed if we don't have anything to give, Lord. But if we do, it's not enough to say thank you. So, Lord, we said thank you right now. 
And as we bring our tithes forth and our offerings forth, God, don't let our heads swell up because we're able to give. For you said, blessed is the lady that gave just five pence, all she had to give. So, Lord, we give you all we have to give. And we say, thank you, Lord. And, Lord, as we go about this day of worship, let your Holy Spirit continue to fall down in this place. Let your Shekinah glory, God, come and just dwell in us. Lord, we thank you this day. If we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you. So, Lord, accept these gifts that we bring and let it be for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray. The only name man can be saved by. In Jesus' name, amen. It's just another day that the Lord has kept me. Another day kept me from all sin and evil. He kept my mind stayed on Jesus. It's just another day that the Lord has kept me
Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gotta hold on to him. No matter what comes your way. Trust in the Lord. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Through sickness. Hold on. Through pain. Hold on. Through death. Hold on. Through everything. He will never leave you. 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 Hold on. 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 You gotta be I have a question. How many of you in here is just barely holding on right now? It's okay to say it if you're barely holding on. It's just barely. Barely. How many of us are good in holding on? And how many of us in the middle? I'm glad to know there's still people in this world praising God. Yeah, yeah. Still to know people know what it is to be among the living and not amongst the dead. But a lot of us, believe it or not, are dead men and women walking. <laughs> it seems like we got life, but like life is missing within us. The spirit of the Lord, I, I tell you what it looks like, um, it's amazing what God can do, isn't it? The Spirit can get in a man with a pink suit on and be able to give God all the praises and see. Hold on to his unchanged hand. We're in our book of Revelation. I need to be honest with you all. I know everybody thinks I'm going to do the whole 19th chapter, 21 chapters. We will, but I got to take a time out after we get to this seventh seal. Once it's broken, I got to pull back for a minute and get my mind together before we go into the trumpets and all the bowls. I, I got to make sure I'm ready for that. But it's interesting. Got a call from a couple members want to call and ask me, who's the next horseman that's coming into the church? They were guessing and trying to say, well, I, I believe this such and such and such. I said, let me give you a little hint. It ain't you. So, <laughs> so you should be rest assured. But last week, 
we opened up the first seal, which was the, the first one. And we know nobody's worthy but Jesus. And one of my individuals that made the scroll for me said, Pastor, you can go ahead and cut it. You ain't got to treat it delicately. We got some more. We'll be able to put it back together for you. I'm going to hold them to that. So capturing last week was the first seal that was broken. And we knew that was the white horse that was in it, a horseman that was coming in. I want you to realize that we do not have live horses in the church right now. So the color you see them in is the horse, but the body is the horseman that is riding the horse. We are going to go right into this word of God, and I thank God for the book of Revelation. I don't understand it. I'm going to be honest with you. Don't steal, can Even after what we're trying to show you all, and this tells you when you read even in the commentary, the reason we use symbols, because you can remember symbols and pictures more than you can. A lot of information is given to your memory bank. And they all stand for significant reasons. I do want to pay tribute to all those that are survivors for cancer, breast cancer awareness month. I just couple everyone in there with cancer. Thanking God because God is a living God. If you don't mind standing, we're going to go to Revelation 3 and 4. I could not house all of these horsemen together, but they won't have the same significance. You need to know what each one of them are really about. So once you see them, you will understand them. Revelation 6, 3 through 4. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that set thereon to take peace from the earth. And that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. You may be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, we trust you with this word. I, I don't know what I'm doing, but you know what you're doing. And I trust in you and I love you and I respect you and I believe in you. And I know you have never failed. You will not fail your children that are here today. Their eyes are open, let their ears ears even be more open and their hearts receptive to the teaching of your word. Let me not overstep. Let me not misstep. Let me not play with your word. Let me stand strong within your word and have, have thy favor upon them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And ushers, you can go ahead and take your seat because we know it's the same series. Be ready. He's a coming. And part four is the opening of the second seal, the peace taker. Revelation 6, 3 through 4. And as we go into God's word, it's about giving respect to God. I, I want to say thank you as we go into the word for revival. Thank you, Antioch East, for showing up and showing out. Thank you, Sister Brenda Scott, for every day you were here cleaning this sanctuary and these restrooms. We, we thank you. We thank Brother AJ. Brother AJ is always here at the end, making sure the doors are locked. And we want to thank, we want to thank Sister Teresa Wells for collaborating with the individual at Clarkston First Baptist Church, their administrative assistant, whose name is also Teresa. Thank you for that link. Thank you for making things happen. And I had given respect to all others the night that we were here, but I want to save them for today. And anytime I say deacons, I also mean the deaconess because they're, they're wives to the deacon. But we also got a blessing that night, our minister of music. Minister of music. On Wednesday night, she joined our church. So we thank God for our minister of music. 
Amen. Dr. Marsha A. Smith, we thank God. Now we pivot to God's word. As I stated, you remember, we were waving the flag, the white flag, and we first beast called the horsemen out. It never tells you which of the four beasts calls a who. It just say one of the beasts. Four beasts that we have. We have one that has a face like an eagle. We have one has a face like a calf. One has a face like a lion, and the other has a face like a man. Six sets of wings. They have those wings to cover their feet, the wings for them to fly with, the wings to cover their body and their face. And all these wings have zillions of eyes on them because it says that God is all-knowing, all-powerful, and we know that, and all-present. With those wings, these beasts play an important role. They're even closer to the Lord than the elders are, the 24. But each beast has a purpose. We have come to last week, we saw the first horseman dressed in white, had a bow, but he did not have arrows. He had a crown on his head because he's come forth in disguise to let you know he's a peacemaker. He comes forth to let you know that he has been called by God, but that is not true. He has been let go by God because he has a purpose to serve. We try to figure out why is it that people are falling for the okie doke What is it about people now they're just going with any and everything? We're so easy to be persuaded. We're looking for this greatness that comes about, and we want to see it. But I want you to know, you'll be able to tell the difference between Christ and the Antichrist. Because Christ is everlasting. The Antichrist is only short term. He has been given this world by the Lord, but his time is running out. You saw him in white last week. But it says that only one person can touch it, the seal of the scroll. We said the reason it was seven seals, the Romans, whenever they did deeds or wills, they put seven seals on them. God relays back to man's thinking so you can understand how God works. It says that the other beasts come forward. You hear a drum roll like thundering. It's coming about, it says. It says that next seal is cut. That next seal is cut, and here come the red horsemen. The red horseman is coming down with a sword. He is coming forth to kill what is before. He is the war horseman. The bloodshed horsemen, dressed all in red, coming forth to take those that are left behind out. You got to understand, if you're one of Jesus' children, you're already gone. You're in the rapture. We left a while back. But there are those that are still remaining in this world. They say he has a sword, and this sword has been given to him by the heavens. But you got to remember, the man in white has done flipped on the script. He has gone in red now because he's coming and he's here right now to cause turmoil. He wants to kill those that are left behind. Because you got to remember, you didn't give your life to Christ when you had a chance to give it to him. I, I want you to know that we all better get ready because he's a coming. And before he comes, you won't hear anything about Jesus Christ coming through those clouds until we get in the 19th chapter. But right now, God is letting Satan have his way. Because, see, you can't get mad with God because God had already warned us. We told us that he would come like a thief in the night. He said, be ready. No man know the hour that I shall appear. So I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, you need to get your house in order. We talk about the book of Revelation. It ain't pretty, is it? It's not something that you want to see. You say, why all the theatrical part? Because we grow and we just love theatrical. We love drama. So I want to give you your drama so you can understand it. See, with John, he was on the Isle of Patmos. And in his writing, he states that it is a red horseman after the seven seal, second seal has been broken. The first time we ever hear about the word sword. 
The word, first time we ever hear the word sword is in Genesis 3 and 24. You can search your Bible, you would never hear that word being used until man has sinned. When man sins, it is stated that God goes out and asks Adam, Adam, where are you? He calls him again and says, Adam, where are you? And Adam reminds him, Lord, I am hiding. He said, why are you hiding from me? He said, because I was naked. How did you know? Because you never knew what nakedness was. He reminds him, and there's punishment. We got to realize something in our lives. I'm a living witness of it. There's consequences for our actions. No matter what we do in this world, there are consequences that we must, all of us have faced in our lifetime. Consequences are not always pretty. But consequences are teachable lessons. They're to teach us that if we do this, then this will happen. If we don't do this, then that won't happen. We all have fallen short of God's glory. We all have been chastised by God one way or another. It is time for chastisement for this world. you got to remember the reason the scrolls have come forth is judgment time. And all of these things have to happen for judgment to take its final course. We hear about the apocalypse. Apocalypse means that it is the final time of the destruction of the world. This is it. It's no more saying, God, give me a second chance. It's no more saying, God, (laughs) just show me a little more favor and grace. God is saying, I told you I was coming. And even when we see the red flag start waving, because you got to remember, Satan will flip the script on you. He'll be white for a moment, then he'll come red all over you. Satan wants to consume you. And what he wants to do, first he wants to build up your confidence. That's what he did last week. He built up your confidence and told you to not come to cause any harm when he knew his true agenda was to take you out. Take who out, Pastor? Those who have not given their life to Christ. In this word of sword, it says that he comes in and he causes confusion. Look at our world today. How much confusion do we have? Look at our teachers in the classroom. God teaches doing more refereeing. They have enough time to be able to teach. Look at us on our jobs. We all get attitudes with each other before we know we take somebody out. Look at us even in our homes. Are we really safe in our homes? We never know the minds of our loved ones in our household. We in our right mind. Can you assume everybody else in your household is in their right mind? We're on a wing and a prayer. Some people favor colors red. I'm not saying that red means Hell, I don't know what hell is going to look like. I never won't get there. But I do know that they tell us there is a place called hell. And if you don't accept the Lord Jesus Christ, you will make your bed there. The first time you hear about a sword, like I said, is in Genesis 3. It says that God cast man out of the Garden of Eden. And he said in the eastward part of Eden... There was a cherubim, those are angels that were put on guard, but they were not there by themselves. There was a flaming sword going to and fro that they could never enter that garden again. That's the first time you hear of a sword. The last time you will hear about a sword is in Revelations 19. The word sword has been used over 373 times in the Old Testament. It's been used 33 times in the New Testament. But sword has always been something that has been brought about to show power. God is going to allow Satan enough power for a little while. Because the prophecies have to be fulfilled. Church members, do not get afraid about revelation and the rapture. Rapture is a promise of God that we're going to be caught up to meet him when he comes. What we should be afraid about and our hearts should be heavier for those who have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. 
those who have pretended to be a child of God and truly have not given their life over to God, those are the ones we should be fearful for because they will be left behind to meet this red horseman. This red horseman, as you see, he has his sword covered. He only shows you so much. But if that red horseman was to pull on his equipment and pull that sword out, you will see that that's where the enemy lies. That is the destruction that's coming about us. Satan wants you to know that he has a better plan. We fell in love how he looked. But then we get into the darkest hours, he'll show us who he truly is. I, I, I want you to understand, too, that sword was used in 1 Samuel. We'll find it in the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 6. There was a king called, his name was Saul. He was on the battlefield, he and his soldiers, with the Philistines. He was battling against the Philistines, and all of a sudden, he had three sons. Three sons on the battlefield with him. We know one of his sons so well. We know Brother Jonathan. We know his other son, another dad. And then he had one more son that he had on that battlefield. Those three sons were murdered on the battlefield. Saul was fighting against the Philistines, and what he did, he noticed that they were being defeated. Saul had been critically injured. He was in intensive care on the battlefield. When he saw where the odds were against him, he asked his armor bearer. He said, what I want you to do is take your sword out, and I want you to let me push that sword into me. Saul did not want to commit suicide, but he wanted his armor bearer to do it. Even though Saul was a wicked king, that armor bearer still knew how to respect his king. He said, I can't do that. What does Saul do? Saul takes the sword and fall upon it himself. The armor bearer sees what Saul has done. He's killed himself. Even the armor bearer cannot stand what is before them. He falls on a sword as well, his own sword, and kills himself. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, we're living in a time now that people are going to be falling on their own swords. We're living in a time now that we think the way we act and our behavior, and I'm going to be honest with you, some of us, we speak to who we want to speak to. We pass who we want to pass. We smile at who we want to smile. I would tell you, my friends would tell you the kind of person I, I don't like sometimes in friends. You either my friend or you're not. I don't want you, to, I want you to know I'm not shopping for friends. I found one a long time ago. His name is Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something. If we keep living like we live, and I'm telling you that it doesn't look too pretty for us. So I want you to know that Satan is enjoying this moment. As you see this brother here, he's busy smiling. That's what Satan doing. He's smiling. Don't think Satan does. He gives you the sword and he'll let you do the work. But when it's all said and done, he's going to take his sword back and put it away. Because he's done his work. That was what happened with King Saul. He fell on the sword. Do you remember Esther? When Esther had to pray about what she was going to do, you would never find the word God mentioned in the book of Esther. You will find the spirit of God in the book of Esther. Esther knew if she went before the king unannounced, she would be beheaded. How did they behead her? With a sword. Brothers and sisters, we're going to the wrong kings, and they're going to behead us. You need to go to the king of kings in order to have your security. In this word today, Revelation is a book. It ain't going to cause you to be clapping and happy and being stumpy. It calls your mind to think, to think about what is ahead. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, he's a cunner, and we better be ready. In this word, we find that this same horseman will be the one to bring about warfare. This week, we saw with Israel, 
We saw with Iranians what happened. They dropped a bomb, missiles on them. They retaliated. I want you to know God's word is true. Israel is God's chosen people. You can't do anything about that. They were chosen by God. But we are God's church. The difference, we may not be Hebrew, but we're Gentiles, and we've been saved by God's grace. And being saved by God's grace, he's coming back for his church. And if you're not ready to go, that means that you're going to be left behind. In this word today, we find that even in God's word, we see that in Ephesians, when we talk about the armor of God, it reminds us in Ephesians 6 and 17, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. When you hear people talk about the whole arm of God and they get to that point about the sword of the spirit, they're speaking of God's word. God's word would be our only protection. God's word is the only thing that's true. God's word is nothing like his word. He will hold you even through sinking sand. God will hold you up on the mountaintop. There is no sword that can destroy you when God got his hands all over you. A sword can damage the body, but it can't kill the soul. I, I want you to understand today in God's word, when he's a coming, he may send out a red horseman. But in the end, Jesus is coming. And when he comes, he's coming to destroy everything, even the man in red. I, I, I want you to know with these seals that are happening before us, it was one that followed Jesus. Everybody's not meant to handle a sword. Everybody cannot lead God's people. Everybody is not meant to say, here we come. There are those that bring more damage holding a sword than bringing peace when you bring a sword. How do you come at a person? Do you come at them like this where you can cause them no harm? Or do you come at them like this, you're ready to cause harm? You make up your mind today that if you're going to trust God with your walk, you better let God handle the business. Let him be the one to take whatever he needs to take out. We are not worthy to take anybody's life. We're not worthy to cause harm to anybody. Jesus will handle all judgment. But some of us feel so powerful when God has put something in our hand. You better be careful when God has laid something in your hand. What you better do is say, God, lead me. Guide me. Show me how to handle this. Because I'm telling you, if you go before God, you're going to fall on your own sword. The book of Revelation, there's one that is able to take that sword and say, you don't need this. When God, why would you give Satan the opportunity to do this to us? God not giving Satan the opportunity to do it to his children. He's given an opportunity to do those who did not claim him. To those that said there wasn't a God. To those who didn't say, Master, Master. To those who didn't say, Lord, I give you my all in all. Those are the ones that are going to be taken out. Brothers and sisters, you won't be taken out. You say, I believe in Jesus. Time will tell. Because before even that first horseman come about, we've seen souls being taken because they love Jesus. But you find joy in knowing that there's a place where we never grow old. There's a place where God people will always say hallelujah. This past week, it was asked of Pastor Moore. Pastor Moore, you said Hallelujah is not our highest praise, but in the Bible it speaks of it being our highest praise. And how is that? It's not. Pastor Moore said obedience was our highest praise. And what he meant by that was this. There are those that say hallelujah just to be saying hallelujah. 
There are those that say amen just to be saying amen. There are those that say we give God all the glory just to be saying we give God all the glory. But if you're obedient with God, your heart is changed. If you're obedient with God, when you say, Lord, thank you, you really mean, Lord, thank you. When you say hallelujah, you mean hallelujah. It all belongs to God. It's where your heart is, and your heart has to be given to God. The only thing I want God to do, if it's not right, if it's not right, I want God to cut out my heart and restore me a new heart. I want God to take out that thing that is blocking my communication with him. I want God to go ahead and do what he got to do before he allow him to come and do what he got to do. I just know that there's a better way. And I know that he's a coming. There was one that bragged about having the sword. He could handle Satan, he thought. You ain't got to worry about me. I'm with you, Jesus. Don't worry. If anybody try to hurt you, I got them. And he said, don't worry. I got this. After Jesus came out of the Garden of Gethsemane, after he finished praying, after he had been up in the upper room, had his time with his disciples, there go Peter. Peter was so comforted of himself. Peter didn't have to worry about nothing. Peter was the man that had the strut. He was the man that was the it factor. At least he thought he was. He walked around and he just thought that I got everything going. Don't worry about it. I got your back, Lord. Peter saw that they had put their hands on Jesus. He pulled that sword off quickly, took the high priest servant, cut off his ear. And Jesus told him to put that sword up. He that liveth by the sword will die by the sword. Brothers and sisters, we all come from something, don't we? We all done came from something, have we not? But I'm going to tell you something. That something got away from us when we gave our life to Christ. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when we say God is our battle act in the time of battle, that means that we give up the sword and we just open our arms and surrender all to him. I want you to know today is that if you're going to be on God's side, you better start believing. You better start receiving. You better start working it out within yourself and let God work it out through you so you can be where you need to be. I don't need a red horseman to come in and tell me what I need to do for the Lord. The word tells me. This sword here tells me what I need to do with the Lord, how I should walk, how I should talk. How I should live? How should I treat my fellow brothers and sisters? How would I be able to say, God, when I'm wrong, God, I repent. God, redeem me. Lord, help me. I want to be better than what I was. I may not be like Adam in Genesis. I'm worse than Adam, but God had mercy and grace on me. And because his grace is sufficient, I know everything is going to be all right. That God had already slayed him from out of my life when I gave him my life to him. I want you to know right now, there's a red horseman that's coming on his way. But make sure you know, if you've given your life to Jesus, you won't see that red horseman. So is anybody, is anybody right now on borrowed time? Anybody right now done turned your back on the Lord? Has anybody right now forget how to praise God? There was a time in the church we used to praise God. The only thing you could hear was glory, glory, and hallelujah. There was a time we were clapping our hands. There was a time we were stomping our feet. There was a time we were just saying, have your way, Holy Spirit, have your way. Whatever happened to those days? I can't make you shout. That's God's business. But I can give you a word and tell you the word is true. Word is true. God's words never change. God's word will see you through. God's word will be your oxygen. God's word will be your food. God's word will be your clothes. God's word will be your shelter. God's word will be your all in all. God's word will be your friend. God's word will be your husband. God's word will be your wife. God's word will be your children. God's word will be your bank account. If you just call on him, if you just give your life to Jesus, 
I don't know about you, but I'm sold out to the man. I'm sold out because I know that I can't handle that sowing. I've been done chopped everybody up in here. But I know that I need to put it down. Let God do what he needs to do. And when he's done it, when God has done his work, everything, everything will be all right. And do I have anybody in God's house? Are you tired and sick and tired of being tired? Do I have anybody in God's house saying, I want to be a better Christian? Do I have anybody in God's house saying, I've been wrong, but I can forgive people? Do I have anybody in here saying, I've done people wrong? I need to change my mind and be better than what I was. The devil is trying to slice your mind. He wants you to be confused. The devil want to take over your spirit. The devil want to find a house in your heart, but he cannot stay there because you belong to God. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of seeing people play in church. We both are coming to church because we need the Lord. I don't know about you, but I need him. 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 I don't need him. I don't need him. I need Jesus. We need Jesus. As they said, silver and gold, I have none. But what I do have, it's eternal. I want you to look today. When Satan comes, he dressed for the kill. When Satan comes, he don't care about you. He wants you to make a fool of yourself. And after you done made a fool of yourself, he'll go somewhere else. Because he got some more people he want to make a fool out of. And then you're left to lick your own wounds. In this book of Revelation, that lamb keep coming up. I had a couple of people come to me and say, Pastor, why did you do that to the lamb? Why did you mess him up like that? Uh, you just could have kept him like he was. We messed him up like this. But see, you all thought this is purity. We are, we're lambs of God. But Jesus, see, that's why you can't stand and look at him. You can't stand and look at Jesus because you can't handle the truth. But the truth is, the word told us he had seven horns, seven eyes, and he had been slaughtered. But he was the only one that could touch that scroll. His eyes, he has all knowing. He sees it all. He has all the wisdom. You thought you were smart. And I tell you what I've learned about cuteness. I've been good looking all my life. But I learned something. If I smile a little harder, I start seeing those wrinkles here and there. I start knowing something. If I look a little harder, no matter how much you try, I have no problem graying because that means that life is still good to me. But what I've learned I don't know nothing, but when I call on Jesus, he knows all about my troubles. He knows all about my fears. He knows all about my mistakes. He knows all about my goodness. He knows all about my slip and slides. He knows about my darkest hours. He knows about my losses, but through it all, he loves me. He loves you. I want to tell you something. Only thing Satan got pleasure out because he saw Jesus being slaughtered on the cross and thought it was over. But see, what Satan knows, he'll never be able to hold Jesus and never be able to be near Jesus again. So let him do all his work while he can do it. 
But where we're going, every one of God's sheep, he's going to start doing the calling. And what we're going to start seeing us do, we're all going to get in line waiting to be received because Jesus has been our intercessory and he's pushed us through. They say it's going to be without a spot or a wrinkle. But I just think about it sometimes. Lady Patricia and I was eating dinner at a restaurant. i never forget that year. We were enjoying ourselves, just smiling and looking at each other. I think she was Google and I, me, and I was Google and I, her. And we got our meal. And we saw, again, I would go to those lamb chops again. We saw lamb. Looking out the window, we saw herds of lambs walking all around out there. We said, go our meal out there. And that's what Satan does. Satan looked out that window. He said, go my meal right there. Brothers and sisters, we're not a meal for Satan. We're a lamb for Jesus. In the Bible, it doesn't say God's going to take his lamb chops in. It doesn't say that he's going to slay us. It says he's going to receive his lambs. We're coming whole. Man see the goodness in you. And the man can't stand it. Even tell you something, even when I want to sometime, and that's a strong word, when I want to hate, God won't let me hate. Even when I want to disrespect, God won't let me disrespect. Even when I, God won't let me do that. You say, you think you're perfect. Oh, Lord, no. If you look up under me, you'll see everything. That's why God covers me. But one thing I do know, there's a change that came over me. Mama couldn't do it. Daddy couldn't do it. Only Jesus could change me. You got a choice. Dickon Favors, thank you for being the Red Horseman today. You're so welcome. Thank Come right here with me. I know we're on the money, but you got a choice. Which one? Which one do you choose today? You got a choice. You know what Jesus does? You saw Satan, didn't you? He even took his hand across Jesus. But what Jesus does, he just stand there. When it's your time, Dickie Patterson, Hold on this for me. Come forward with me with this. Come toward me. One thing Jesus does, right here. See, he had his arms so open wide, you had nowhere to go. But Jesus said, I got you. <laughs> and that's what he does. I got you. Satan just did this. I own the whole world. Come on. But you got to remember, he didn't give up that sword when he had his hands open. Jesus just had his hands open, say, here I am. The Lamb of God touched my soul. And he made a change in me. That second seal has been broken. That Antichrist is coming. You won't, you think you know who he is, but they tell us he comes from the Far East. So you don't know who he is, but one thing he will do, he will draw all men together, making you think that there's peace. But then he turned coats on you and be the one to be the peace taker. Don't be fooled. I know you've been here all your life. Time is at hand. You've been here all your life. Time is winding up. I got news for you. It's true. It's true. What are you going to do? 
The doors of the church are open because the book of Revelation, that second seal is open. He's not leaving because he got to finish his job. But Jesus is going to come back and take care of all that stuff. But brothers and sisters, I want you to be there for the rapture. I don't want you to stay behind. I want you to be there for the rapture. As we open the doors of the church, I want to tell you a story of one lamb that they nailed him to the cross. They didn't say a sword, they said took their spear. But a spear does the same damage. About two Sundays ago, when I went to see Pastor Howard, and after we left his house, I looked over the expressway. And I told Patricia, I said, Patricia, somebody had an accident. But I don't see a car anywhere. I saw cars just lined up. And as we were going to the bridge, we said, we're going to pray with them. God, just have mercy. Monday morning, I got a call from one of our church members. Said, Pastor, Sunday when I left church, I had an issue with one of my campers on my truck. I went and got it fixed. Then I was headed home, and my camper blew off. And I just said, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, it's going to get killed. Lord, have mercy. Passing my mind and my heart was just shaking. I didn't know what to do. Trucks and everything was hitting. I said, by the chance, any way possible, you were on 285 by Boulder Crest Road. He said, that was me, Pastor. The wreck I saw was one of our church members who careful went off. But he said, you know what, Pastor? I'm one of his lambs. He saved me. And not one person was injured. Not one person had an accident. He said, it wasn't possible. Brother Antoine, just wave your hand. It was you. But God saw his lamb. I want you to check your hearts right now. The doors of the church are open. Your camper may fly off. But God got you. So I'm asking you, the time is now. We got five more seals to go. But there's a red flag waving right now. Satan is out to kill, steal, and destroy. But I tell Satan, you have no power over Jesus. God did not come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. So is there anybody today want to give their life to Jesus? Is there anybody that need to come back to the Lord? The time is now. When you hear the doors open, we're just saying, come on, lamb. Come on, precious lamb. Come on. Is there one? Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Before you take your seat, God knows every one of his lambs by their name. 
and they know him by his voice. I can't make anybody join a church. I can't make anybody give their life to God. But if you don't give your life to Christ, you're down for the slaughter. So we just say, is there anyone before you take your seat? You all may be seated. 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 We want to thank you all today. We thank God for you all. And like I said, we'll come out of Revelation after that seventh seal is broken. But I pray you walk away today to know to be ready. He's a coming. Because the prophecies have to be fulfilled. We thank you all for being with us today. Our deacon and deaconess and Ms. Lady Patricia, we know we're going across the hall. There's a gathering for the deacons and their wives. But I want to say to each and every one of you all, I'm glad God got you. I'm glad you got your business straight out with the Lord. But I encourage you all to encourage one another. And we thank God for it today. We see we got Deacon Leroy Glass with us too. We thank God for your Deacon Glass. Welcome back. But if you don't mind standing as we close out, please join us next Saturday for the carnival. We will give out information regarding Pastor Howard's home going. We're just waiting for tomorrow for the family to finalize and you all will get a calling post. But we thank God for that man of God. Amen. Let us pray. Father, glory. Father, mercy and grace. Father, that goes beyond each one of our understanding. Lord, we understand what John must have been going through to see all of this that came before his face. But God, we thank you for being God all by yourself to see him through. But Lord, let us be fulfilling to you. Lord, we all have a purpose in this life. We have been created by your hands to serve you and to give you the glory. I ask you to be each one of these brothers and sisters as they depart today. Walk with them, God. Hold them. Encourage them. Protect them. Build them up. Manifest them like never before. And we know that everything will be all right. So may the Lord watch between me and thee while we're absent one from another. Let's not forget to pray for one another. In Jesus' name. And to God be the glory. Amen. Amen, amen and amen.